called Omar Molinde. Omar is a, an Arabic name because I was born in a Muslim family. Uh, I am a married man with one wife and six children. My father is an area Muslim leader and uh, one of my elder brother is the district Kazi. In the Quran, they teach you in our country, they, there is what they call a da'wah, so that you begin to propagate Islam. So I had finished uh, that course of being a da'i. I know the Islam, I know the theology, I know the Sharia. I know whatever a good Muslim and a true Muslim must know, and a leader in Islam must know. In December uh, 24th of 2011, yeah. as I started earlier, in the morning time, uh, you were probably planning for Christmas the next day. What, what was going on? And walk us through the 24th. Yeah. Uh, as I was going out near my car, somebody stood in front of it. And it was a little bit dark. And it stood in the dark. And then another one was this side. So as I was going to the car like this, I saw somebody. Then I see this one. But this one is in the dark. And this one said, Pastor. He wanted to, me to turn my face. That's what I, I know. Because he said, Pastor, help me. So I'm going to open the car. Then somebody is calling me from this side. Yet he wanted me to give him the full face to pour acid. But when... He said, Pastor, I, my mind said, he is in the dark. Why is he calling me? He's a wrong character. My heart told me he's a wrong car character. I opened the door. As I was opening, I had half face. This one, you see. He poured acid on me. I felt like fire from up to down. I could not see. All the eyes be became closed at uh, that time. But what happened, uh, I knew in my mind that the enemy is this way, but I'm coming from this way. So I just turned and ran to go back to my office. When I was turning, I heard another acid behind. Shh. And one of these acid touched me somewhere here, maybe here. And it was too much fire than the first one. I screamed. Then the boys came out. My, my boys were inside. They came out to run and say, what? The people ran in different directions. But before they ran, when they, say, when they poured acid on me, shh, they said, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. They screamed Allah Akbar three times before running away. So I realized I have fallen in the hands. I've fallen in the hands of, of my enemies. <laughs> oh God. So my boys organized and uh, they took me to hospital. And uh, this is the story. This is the story. It pains my brother. We do something good. We do something right. And, uh, The 
it's not because of this that no, I'm crying. Of course not. It's because of doing something right and then you paid something wrong. You know as well as I do, um, there's evil in the world and there's evil in people. I know. But uh, you should be dead. How come you're not? God is mighty. If you had to, to share a short message with people listening that will watch this, whether in America or Andrea or Jewish people, what would you like to tell them? Mainly Americans, God Almighty has given you the grace. Whatever you do in America influences everybody in the world. You have that grace. One thing that Islam is doing to defeat you is causing you to be coward and fearful to stand up and speak against the invasion of Islamization which is going on in your country. Stand up before it's late. North Africa is the part of Africa which first embraced Christianity. It was defeated by intimidation and threat. If you get afraid today, within time, you will find your children and your grandchildren being Muslims and torturing other people. Stand up now and defeat the challenge of the global Islamization agenda. And that is what I'm telling even Christians. We speak as Christians today, talk about places like Ephesians, the letter of Paul to Ephesians. What is Ephesians right now? Check the place and see. They don't have a church. Check the place of the church of Antioch. Where was it? Check the places of all these uh, uh, places where Simon Peter and uh, preached the gospel. Paul went on with his missionary journeys. You will find that Islam has got a challenge which is on a, on a door. And instead of standing up, we are not going to stand up in arms, but we are going to stand up in the word of God. Let's not fear to open up and stand and speak the truth. Otherwise, if we don't stand now, it will be too late within coming years. One thing which I want to leave with you, all of people watching me, is that if you know that what you are doing is right, stand boldly and proclaim it. Don't fear. The spirit of darkness use intimidation. Don't be intimidated. People fear to die, but Jesus said, do not fear those who kill the flesh. He knew they would try to kill us. And Jesus said, whatever message I give you underneath the bed, stand at the roof and declare it. That means Jesus knew that we will be intimidated and he, he did not tell us only to run, but he said, don't fear them. It, the word don't fear is more clear in, in the book of Matthew chapter 10. And when Peter was, uh, was uh, persecuted and intimidated, what happened? The Bible says he was scourged in the book of Acts of the Apostles. He was beaten. But Peter said, I cannot stop to speak what I have heard and what I have seen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a high time. If it is the truth, let's stand and speak it. If we are the light of the world, it's the time we shine before it's late. God bless you. Thank you very much. I got, I got to get one more thing because that was very powerful. We're going to show this to a lot of Jewish people in America. What's your challenge to, to Jewish people to support Israel? The Jewish people, uh, I am a former Muslim. Have no doubt about that. I hated Israel even before knowing where it is found on a map. The challenge between the fight and the hatred against Israel is more so of a religious motivated thing than a political. You must know there are some people standing somewhere in the presence of worship brainwashing people that the nation of Israel has no right to exist. When you give them Gaza they will need East Jerusalem. You give them East Jerusalem, they will need Jerusalem. 
You give them Jerusalem, they will take Tel Aviv, you will have no state. What I'm saying is that don't sell your land for peace. Stand and resist the evil. Stand with your nation, you must have a nation. I was a Muslim, I'm speaking the truth. The teaching of Islam does not see Israel on the map. They don't teach that there is a nation called Israel. So for every child who is coming up, he is working for the destruction of this nation. There are a few others who are not, but they are working for this destruction. So you give them a leg, they will take uh, a waist, and you give them a waist, they will take a chest, a chest, and then they will take a head. Let's stand for the truth. If it is truth, stand for it, and the God of the Bible will defend your land.